Coming up on today's program, strategies for combating the cycle of higher interest rates, plus the run-up in energy prices, especially crude oil and natural gas, does it last, and how to participate. Eric Linsky, Managing Director at Direction Investment, joins us right after this. program, I'm Ariane Alcorta with ETF Guide. It's good to see you again. If you're here for the first time, hit the subscribe button to keep on top of our latest original episodes like Spotlight, ETF Battles, and the other shows in our program lineup. We enjoy interacting with our audience, so post your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. We've seen a massive upswing in energy stocks and commodities across the board. We'll tell you about ways to position your portfolio. Plus, we'll examine to hedge your portfolio against rising interest rates and stock market volatility. Here to talk with us about that and more is Ed Eglinski, Managing Director at Direction Investments. Ed, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me back. Inflation is running hot. And to cool it off, the Federal Reserve may have to lift interest rates more aggressively than previously thought. Ed, from an investment strategy point of view, what can investors do to hedge their portfolios against the threat of higher interest rates? Well, one way certainly is through the commodity markets. Historically, commodities have tended to do well during periods of inflation and higher interest rates. If you look historically, the CPI uh, higher CPI tends to correlate with higher interest rates. Uh, Direction has a broad commodity strategy, uh, COM, C-O-M, it's the Direction Auspice Broad Commodity ETF. Uh, it is tracking a rules-based index that is tactical in its approach. So unlike a lot of other broad commodity benchmarks that give you exposure to the commodity space, we are not static 100% long. Based on price trends, we'll be long a commodity showing a favorable price trend, but in cash with the commodity showing a downward price trend. And right now we're long nine out of the possible 12 commodities within the portfolio. So this is a way for investors to participate in the broad commodity markets, capture the majority of the commodity upside, but more importantly, potentially mitigate that downside risk that's often associated with commodities because they could be volatile in nature. Now, energy stocks are the best performing S&P 500 industry sector thus far this year. They've been boosted by rising prices for crude oil and natural gas. Tactical bullish ETFs with leverage like tickers ERX and GUSH have seen impressive gains. Plus, Direction just added a new oil services, Bull 2X Fund, ticker symbol ONG. So, Ed, what trends are you seeing in the energy sector? Well, certainly energy stocks are indirectly related to oil price. And oil prices have uh, moved significantly higher really over the last year. Uh, energy stocks, for the most part, have followed suit to uh, a given degree. Uh, for those traders that are looking to trade either side, whether it's bull or bear, um, there's a lot of geopolitical risk right now with what's going on in the Russia and Ukraine. It's a fluid situation. Uh, so we do have the ability uh, for a trader to trade both sides of that trade with energy stocks. Uh, you alluded to a couple of the two times leverage daily reset that we have available to clients. A couple of ways to play the energy sector uh, through our vehicles are gush and drip, which is getting really participation to those uh, oil and gas exploration and production type of stocks. Uh, also, ERX, ERY, which is our 2X bull and bear uh, that gives you exposure to the energy select sector uh, index, uh, which is basically looking at those bigger integrated companies such as Chevron and Mobil. And then lastly, what you alluded to, our most recent addition to the energy stock suite is ONG, and that's the oil services area. We just have a bull product for that. Uh, but these, again, are designed as short-term tactical trading vehicles, way to play different types of energy themes uh, within the space. 
Right now, sentiment is favoring value stocks over growth. In fact, Direction has a pair of ETFs that allow financial advisors and traders to overweight stocks by styles. RWGV is growth over value, while RWVG is value over growth. How do these two ETFs work? Well, as you said, that's the big uh, debate on Wall Street, uh, growth over value, value over growth. Uh, for those advisors and investors that want to express a view, uh, we have two pairs of ETFs that could give you that exposure. So right now, value over growth has been a, a, a better trade, at least in the short term. So RWVG would be something that somebody might want to use. And these are structured as a 150-50 type of ETF, meaning... 150% overweight to the Russell 1000 value. And for that uh, part that you want to underweight, short 50%, in this case, the Russell 1000 growth. So you get the net spread within that ETF. So for those individuals that want to overweight, in this case, value over growth, RWVG could be a way to do that. If your trading view is correct, it could give you an enhanced return. Uh, so these are tools that people could use, especially with style boxes. We also have RWGV as well. If somebody feels that growth is going to outperform value, uh, we have the ETF for that as well. And we're using the Russell 1000 indexes of value of growth to give you that exposure. One final question before we take off. Uh, stock market volatility has picked up and some of the inverse performing stocks ETFs in directions lineup have been strong year to date performers. How have investors and traders been using inverse ETFs to capitalize on the trend? Well, we have a number of inverse ETF options. And of course, with the VIX being spiking up recently and a risk off environment, uh, we're seeing more interest in our bear funds. These should be looked as a short-term tactical trading vehicles. Uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of interest in our uh, triple leverage bear tech, uh, TECS, uh, semiconductor bear, SOXS. Also, interest rates, the way they're moving, people want to participate uh, if rates rise. Uh, we have TMV, which is a triple leverage 20-plus year. Uh, for people to tactically trade. Uh, but when you look at some of the other products in the inverse space that have really started to garner some assets, we have a non-leveraged ETF of the S&P 500, SPDN, that a lot of advisors and investors are using for their clients to try and reduce the beta or long exposure of their portfolio, or as a directional tactical trade, thinking the S&P is going down, but maybe they'll hold it a little longer or the potential to because it's a non-leveraged ETF. So it may not have the decay or compounding issues that a 2X inverse or 3X inverse would have. We're seeing about four times the normal trading volume right now over the last couple of months in SPDN. And there are other options for the non-leveraged inverse S&P out there, but we're probably the most cost efficient way to do so at 50 basis points. Now we're going to have to leave it there, Ed. Thanks for dropping by, and we appreciate your insights. To learn more about the ETF lineup at Direction Investments, visit Direction.com. The link is posted in the description section below. Don't forget to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. Tell us how you've been enjoying our timely programs like this one, along with ETF battles and many others. You can also find us on Twitter at ETF Guide. I'm Ariane Alcorta. Thanks for watching. Thank you.